<laughs> All right, great. All right, welcome to the Chain Gang. It's the hottest show on the blockchain and your number one guide to the cryptocurrency revolution. We're still working on our intro music. Um, but uh, how are you doing today, Brian? Good, coming at you live from San Diego, California. It's the Chain Gang. Yeah. Hey, Roman, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic. All right, awesome. And today we have a very special guest, someone that um, uh, I've known in the Bitcoin world for a while. He's the first person to sh give me my first paper wallet. Uh, it's an honor to have you on, uh, Stephen Michaels. Hey, thanks for having me. Appreciate you having me on the show. All right, great. Um, so, uh, Stephen, why don't you just uh, introduce yourself for our guest? Sure, sure. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll give the uh, condensed version so I don't bore people to tears. But uh, I have uh, a, a long time uh, love of freedom and liberty, and uh, uh, money is obviously a big aspect of that. And um, I actually was uh, a fan of and involved uh, with uh, things like uh, eGold, you know, which is one of the uh, Bitcoin predecessors. That was a, a digital gold-backed currency that was. Uh, you know, we all had high hopes for it was gonna it was gonna change the world and free us from the shackles of the central bankers. And uh, um, but uh, once it got a little bit big enough to be a threat, uh, it was relatively easy to shut down. So there was some fatal flaws in, in that structure, and uh, so I kind of set it aside for a while. And uh, uh, ironically, it was it was I think in January 2011 I got. Uh, uh, an anonymous email, and it was someone that all, all they sent me was uh, Satoshi's white paper, and uh, and I read it, and I thought, you know, that sounds pretty cool, but but there's nothing backing the currency, so I made that classic uh, 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 economic error, thinking that it had to be backed by something, um, and uh, so I set it aside, and and that was a, a really expensive mistake. I think Bitcoin was trading about a dollar at a bit a Bitcoin at that time. But it wasn't until um, I think like six months later. It was in June of 2011, and uh, I think it was the weekend of the seventh. And I remember it clearly because I was I, I had an article pop up on my screen, uh, and it was uh, from Gawker Magazine. And it was the article, uh, you know, how you can buy or, or meet the underground marketplace where you can buy any drug imaginable using this new anonymous currency called Bitcoin. And uh, and you know immediately all the bells went off in my head, thinking, uh, "Wow, if this, you know, I read the article and I thought if this can help uh, people who are being uh, persecuted um, uh, protect their 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 money and their 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 ability to transact with each other, I thought this this is a huge uh, opportunity and a gift for humanity, and uh, and it's revolutionary." So uh, you know, I've I've been in a, you know I couldn't sleep for days as I studied it and researched it and uh, uh, tried to figure out how to buy some. I think I was one of the first persons on uh, Bitcoin talk forums to actually offer gold and silver in trade for Bitcoin. I figured that would get somebody's attention and they would sell me some of their Bitcoin. <laughs> and uh, um, you know, and then from there I just uh, you know addicted to anything and all things Bitcoin. And uh, you know, I get up in the morning, I don't read. A newspaper or the front page of Yahoo. I read the front page of Reddit on a Bitcoin page. So, um, and so from there, I've just uh, written different things and started a few little businesses. And we can jump into those in, in a little while. But, but yeah, I'm just excited about it. The fact that it's gonna, uh, you know, it, it allows people greater control of of their own property, and and that's cool. That's great. Um, so you you. You were already a gold bug to begin with. Like, how far does that go back? Yeah, I think uh, about 20 years. Um, I remember many years ago, I stumbled into a uh, bookstore and uh, um, I saw a book by uh, Harry Brown. It was called uh, "How I Found Freedom in an Unfree World," and I thought that's a really cool title of a book. And uh, so I jumped in and I, I bought it and I read it and uh, you know, turned out he was this you know, big, great libertarian thinker and, and said a lot of things that made a lot of sense to me. And uh, and then a few years went by and uh, um, I stumbled into uh, um, the concept called a PT or perpetual traveler or 
or a possibility thinker, and, and those types of books introduced me into uh, Austrian economics, uh, sound money, um, Murray Rothbard, uh, Ludwig von Mises, and then that's when I really thought, wow, you know, this all makes sense, and uh, and I got to get some gold and silver, and uh, so yeah, I I have been a gold and silver bug for many many years, and. Um, and, and kind of like I mentioned earlier, that's one of the problems with uh, uh, some people who have been gold bugs for a long time is we, is we kind of get overcommitted to it and we almost treat it like a, a religion and you shut, our, you shut yourself out to other possibilities and, and that's why I had that narrow vision that, you know, it's either precious metals or nothing else and it caused me to, to miss out on six months of Bitcoin opportunity. Um, but it wasn't until later that I really thought about it and thought, you know what, um, gold isn't backed by anything either, just like uh, Bitcoin isn't. Uh, gold is valued for what it is and what it does and what it allows you to do and, and all the unique properties that it has. And Bitcoin acts the same way. It's valued for, for what it is and what it does, what it allows you to do, the utility. And, uh, and then scarcity doesn't hurt either. So... Um, uh, you know, I finally made that connection, and uh, there's been no turning back. I, you know, I can't get enough Bitcoin, and uh, I love this current price pullback from from the standpoint that it's like getting to go back in history about a year and and, and go back and, and buy coins cheap. You know, so yeah. trouble is, I already bought everything I could, so I don't have any money left <laughs> to buy anymore. So, <laughs> so I got to go figure out how to earn some more money to do that. So. I guess we all bought at the top, you know. So well, you yeah. could always uh, you could always sell some drugs for Bitcoin online, right? That's sure, where, uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> so uh, I might go back to your roots, you know. <laughs> it, it, it's funny because uh, I was just reading the, one of the headlines today, and uh, if if anyone any of you guys have followed Bitcoin from I call it the early days, whatever that is, uh, but you know there was the old uh, Bert Wagner. Um, a uh, guy who had a uh, Bitcoin show and and a lot of other things and uh, a lot of controversy too and ended up, um, you know, uh, one of the one of the uh, many hacks. Uh, he lost a lot of money. A lot of people lost a lot of money and and uh, uh, kind of went down in flames. But uh, but yeah, he was just indicted. I was reading uh, on Reddit, uh, indicted for operating an unlicensed money transmitting business and. Uh, um, so it's a, it's a very uh, interesting and still yet dangerous world out there in, in Bitcoin land, and you just have to be very, very careful. But uh, but yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. I got off track. So yeah, well, but, uh, that's great. <laughs> um, so yeah, how long do you think it'll be like that? When is Bitcoin going to be a, a safer place for grandma? <laughs> Well, I, th I think it, it's, it's uh, I don't know, good question. Um, Bitcoin is like fire. It's, it's very dangerous, and if you don't respect it, it'll, it'll burn you very quickly. And, um, uh, and people are finding that out, you know, uh, it, it, and there's a reason why banks don't want to do business with Bitcoin businesses, uh, because, uh, because it is so, so dangerous and it can be abused, and... Um, yeah, and I used to uh, get mad at them and hate the bankers just like everybody else, but I also have a, a newfound respect for the, the fact that they walk a tightrope uh, because they're dealing, you know, mixing fiat currency with Bitcoin is like mixing uh, oil and water. They just don't go together. And anytime you trade uh, fiat, which is an inferior currency for Bitcoin, the person giving up the Bitcoin is the one who's taking all the risk. Uh, um, you know, and, and I'll give you guys a kind of a, a classic example. Um, well, we see them every day with all the hacks, right? Uh, Bitstamp a couple weeks ago. Um, uh, uh, in my own case, uh, I, I help uh, people run some Bitcoin ATMs in San Diego, and uh, and they got hit recently with counterfeit bills, so uh, counterfeit hundred dollar bills, which. Um, uh, you know, whenever you have the the most demanded and superior currency, people are going to do whatever they can to to get it and figure out a way to you know to to to, to jerry rig the system and uh, and get it. So so wow. it is. You have to respect Bitcoin, and if you don't, it's really going to bite you in the rear end if you don't. So <laughs> yeah. So um, why don't you tell us about uh, the projects you got going on? Sure. I know you got a lot. Sure. Yeah, and 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 that's probably a fault because I I I see all the different areas that Bitcoin can impact and make a difference, 
and 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 the cool things you can do with it. So I so I have lots of ideas, and uh, actually we're now just in the stages of um, putting together a, a team of people and uh, going out to raise money to kind of help develop these ideas. So uh, one of the first uh, uh, projects early on was uh, uh, trading Bitcoin for uh, gold and silver, and. Uh, uh, you know, we're kind of thinking about doing a little bit uh, more of that now, but again, there's all kinds of uh, issues. Uh, also, uh, BitcoinMerchant.com, which you see on the screen, which uh, right now is just kind of a, a platform where uh, business owners can go list their business uh, as a business that actually takes Bitcoin and get some free uh, marketing and advertising there. But uh, uh, we also have a really cool tool on there where we, we basically have a real clean and simple uh, free point of sale system that any business can start using right now and the difference between us and BitPay and Coinbase's and everybody else is that um, we never touch your private keys so so a, a person can go uh, set up our point of sale system all it is is just a, a, a web-based page that they they can uh, uh, configure with their own Bitcoin address and all our page does is it helps them uh, enter in a, an amount for a sales item, display it to the customer, verify the payments made, and uh, and and the bitcoins go straight to the merchant, so they don't have to worry about trusting any third parties. Um, and so that's a cool little tool that, that we have at Bitcoin Merchant. And uh, in looking at developing some other projects too, uh, one is called uh, Bitcoin Perks, and the idea behind that is to uh, help businesses promote their products and services to the Bitcoin community and, uh, and, and in order to attract that business they offer them special discounts when they spend Bitcoin and, uh, and so the Bitcoin so perks is... Um, is yeah. that going to be like a local thing for, for businesses around, uh, um, around your area or for online It'll be, uh, it'll be, uh, you know, you know. Of course, we always have big plans. We want to, you know, serve the world, but probably a lot of local stuff first. And, uh, um, and, and we're we're entertaining uh, doing some of the gift card approaches as well through that. So, in other words, compete with companies like Gift or eGifter, and yeah. offer uh, uh, prepaid gift cards that they buy at a discount with Bitcoin. Uh, in addition to promoting local businesses, so mm -hmm. so yeah, so that's kind of a cool project. Um, gift is uh, interesting. I mean, um, it's it's a digital gift card. Has anybody here has anybody used Gift before to purchase anything? Yeah, I've used Gift a couple times. How'd it go? Um, it, it's pretty easy to use. I just bought an Amazon gift card the other day. You just uh, transfer it to the, to the address they give you on the app, and it just automatically pulls it up. Uh, so, uh, what, um, do you plan to do like follow their model, Stephen, or do you think it's going to be more like a something um, for physical gift cards, or probably both? And uh, and the reason is, is I think. Uh, Gift does a really good job at promoting national brands, and uh, um, but you have lots of small business owners out there that are one or two location type businesses, and uh, it'd be, you know one of the things we're thinking is it'd be cool if we can figure out a way to help promote their businesses in the local communities, and uh, um, and, and they don't have to be a big national brand, so. Um, so I think I think there's a lot of opportunity there, and, and and yeah, the gift model works really well. I mean, the digital gift cards I, I use I used to use them quite a bit. Uh, um, you know, then uh, you know all kinds of just cool tools out there. So there so there's that, um, uh, and then a few other things I'll talk about in a minute. But uh, but yeah, that's the Bitcoin perks, and I I think there'll be some cool things there. So. Okay. And um, you've mentioned also that it's going to, so it's going to be also kind of like Groupon for Bitcoin too, so it, it'll be businessing, businesses of Bitcoiners and possibly groups of Bitcoiners. Yeah, well, so, or, so, so it won't be the group model, but it'll, the, the thing we copy from Groupon is just that we have special offers for people, so you can, 
You okay. can go to bitcoinperks.com, enter your email, and uh, at some point we'll set it up where you can even get text alerts. And, uh, and then on a periodic basis, uh, whether we do it through geolocation or just a, a, a regular uh, notification that uh, uh, we let you know of new, new and exciting deals for people who have Bitcoin, and um, and they'll make it worth your while to spend to them. So it's it's traditional advertising and marketing, but it's targeting Bitcoin users and giving yeah. giving us an incentive to to shop, you know, and spend our yeah. bitcoins. I think that's really vital for the um, for Bitcoin right now because uh, you know everybody wants to hold on to their Bitcoin uh, right now, you know, especially when the prices are low. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and. Um, you know, a lot of people you say, you know, you know, bit, you know, merchant adoption is what'll drive Bitcoin growth, and and I'm not sure I believe that. Um, uh, what what'll drive Bitcoin growth is the realization that that it's the superior money and it's the superior store of value, and uh, and by way of that, uh, merchants will want to start accepting it because it is the superior money, and uh, and once they understand that, they'll. They'll acquire it to hold it, not to convert through BitPay or Coinbase or someone else to fiat currency right away. Um, you know, they'll they'll offer it in their business as a as a method of accumulating Bitcoin, and that's one way they'll be able to accumulate. They'll be able to sell their goods and services for it, and actually get it at a discount because they're able to buy it at their cost of goods. So if you have a product with a 50% margin, um, and you take Bitcoin, even if you take a 10% discount. Uh, that means you still acquired that Bitcoin at, uh, um, you know, what six, 60 cents on the dollar, whatever the math works out to. You. So, so you're mm -hmm. still buying your Bitcoin at a discount. That's the best way to buy it is to offer your goods and services uh, in exchange for Bitcoin. Yeah, great. So, have uh, um, so have you thought of uh, of doing? Uh, have you, well, have you guys ever used um, the, uh, the? Sorry, I've lost my train of thought. Brian, take over. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, um, actually, I, I wanted to go back to uh, when we were talking earlier about uh, currencies being backed by something. I um, you make an interesting point because um, yeah, traditionally when we look at money, that's uh, especially a sound money. That's something we look at. And I have seen um, there's a new uh, alternate alternative cryptocurrency. I, I won't give the name just because it's uh, not important. I don't want us, anyone to think we're hyping Murray coin. all, all coins or anything. But <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's it's a different one. But the, it's it's actually um, it's it's got shares and it's got coins separated so that the coins are backed by U.S. dollars and they figured out a way. So that um, by using trader bots, they can keep the value of this new coin at around one dollar, and they have a separate thing called that are shares that are being used to sort of um, you know make that possible by people putting money into the shares and by mm -hmm. separating the um, you know the investment value of this new coin from that the coin itself, like the shares set aside, and so. When I saw that, I, I thought well, this might be the the only, like the closest thing I've seen to a, a threat to Bitcoin so far. Although it's obviously by its by its nature, it's somewhat centralized. Um, uh, like, do you do you think that uh, Bitcoin not being quote unquote backed by anything is going to uh, hamper its its progress in the future? Um, I, I don't think so because. Um... Because kind of like I mentioned earlier, it, it's it's its own commodity, and so um, the reason it's so volatile is 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 um, the market is still in this discovery phase. In other words, there's millions of people that haven't heard about it, don't understand it, don't know the benefits of it, and so you'll see these big swings or waves of adoption and abandonment as as enthusiasm grows and then wanes. And uh, but but ultimately the, the the economic principles are sound behind it and the utility is strong. That that I honestly believe it'll be the last currency standing after all other currencies uh, eventually self-destruct. Um, and I think it could be a foundation where 
other currencies are backed by Bitcoin. I could actually see that happening, uh, but I don't think Bitcoin itself has to be backed. It, it, um, it, it uh, like you mentioned, you have all these derivatives or these other types of uh, ideas out there, and and there's not a world where there can only be one coin. I mean, we already see that there's all kinds of currencies, and uh, um, and actually any asset is a currency, which we'll talk about in a little bit through the through the Trade City website, but. Um, but but I see that the crypto world more as a or the currency world more as uh, uh, you have uh, what I call community coins, and uh, you have different communities that will adopt a certain uh, medium of exchange because it represents their values uh, or it uh, 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 you know or affinity coins you know people people can uh, uh, get behind a certain idea or a value system or it serves a special purpose so so if uh, Bitcoin uh, uh, which I think it will is it continues to increase in value one uh, potential worry that people have is the cost of transaction fees going up and and if they do go up to a high level what we'll probably see is we'll see Bitcoin be the backing and then there might be another currency that handles the day-to-day -day transactions and then once a month uh, those get uploaded to the blockchain and settled and uh, and so you have a clearing mechanism there on a periodic basis so all these other transactions can take place off blockchain and then they get submitted as one giant transaction and then it uh, preserves the cost effectiveness so um, but but yeah I think this this idea you're talking about this other currency um, sounds really cool and and, uh, and that's the fun thing about it. it does sound like there's some centralization introduced to it but that's not necessarily a bad thing it's just you, you have to weigh that uh, as part of the risk when you go in and deal with those uh, those things but um, but yeah there's room for lots of currencies out there and uh, I think we'll see more and more um, and uh, as people understand uh, value, uh, it's pretty cool. So, anyway. So, what do you make of this price dive that's coming? Um, from? Yeah. So, uh, if you look uh, historically, you would probably have a lot of people calling you saying, "Yeah, What's going on, Steven? yeah, I've had a few." It's, uh, and they are—they're all selling me their coins. It's funny that the, the whole okay. investor psychology is an interesting topic because. People start dumping when there's blood in the streets, and then they buy when everyone else is buying. So, um, but if you look at any long-term bull market, the, the, uh, which Bitcoin is still in a long-term bull market, but you always have these, um, you know, two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back, and and when you look at uh, uh, what they call technical analysis and the behavior of markets. Uh, uh, assets or, or stocks or commodities that are in this long-term bull market can actually correct as much as 90 percent uh, what they call a retracement a 90 percent correction and still maintain their long-term trend line as being up and uh, so when people quote you know 2014 was the worst year for Bitcoin uh, they're just looking at one 12-month period but if you extend that to 24 months it's still up 1,100 percent, and uh, or whatever the percentage is, but it's still in the upwards trend line. So, so we're just, uh, in my opinion, I think we're just in one of these corrections, which uh, incidentally is a tremendous buying opportunity. I, I think the next advancement will be in the in you know several thousand dollars. So, uh, uh, you know, try and fight the tendency to bail out and see if you can buy some more at these prices. So. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, how, what what has it been like? What kind of feedback do you get from your merchants, with Bitcoin merchant? Sure. So, what's what's interesting there is um, a lot of them are afraid because it's new and different, and so um, the way we provide free services, so we don't have a whole lot of incentive to go charge somebody to set them up for it. So there's 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 no incentive there to do that. So what you have to do is let it grow organically. And so with a business owner that you know if, if you're in business what you want to do is make it easy for people to buy from you. And so the more ways you can give a, a, a customer to buy from you, uh, the more business you're going to have. And the more creative you are, and the more flexible you are in, in how you sell your products and services, the, the more success you'll have. So Bitcoin is is 
for for any business who's looking to increase their business, it's it's a um, uh, it's a great opportunity. It does require a little bit of technical study and and some basic setup and understanding of how it works, and uh, and that's where I think a lot of them get hung up. You know, it's the fear of the unknown, the fear of something new. But once you set them up to take Bitcoin, um, like you know, in 30 seconds I can walk into a business, uh, uh, set them up that free point of sale system, and uh, bookmark it on their their phone at the register or a tablet. And they're taking Bitcoin, and uh, once they realize how easy it is, it's like, oh yeah, that's you know, why didn't I do that before? <laughs> and yeah. that that's it, it's almost boring now. It's like, oh okay, yeah, we take Bitcoin. You know, I mean, there's a few businesses now that, you know, once they take it, it's like, you know, it's not a big issue. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, my experience, I mean, I helped a a coffee shop set up to take Bitcoin yeah. kettle. You know, we've all been there and. Yeah. Uh, they actually keep the Bitcoin now, which is cool. Perfect. But it's, yeah. every time you go through it, it's not perfectly integrated with their POS. It's uh, my experience is like they have to do it as as they would a gift card, which means they have to close their uh, close their screen and open a new. Uh, right. They're using BitPay. You got to yeah. talk to them about that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> And uh, they're using BitPay, and uh, um, it's a little clunky. It, you know, it gets, it's, it happens. But you know, I can tell a lot of the um, uh, whoever's working the register, they get nervous sometimes. Like, oh, you know, right. am I gonna do this right? And uh, yeah. So, what do you think about that? Like, so, so yeah, that whole user experience is horrible right now, and uh, uh, and and I totally know what you're talking about. And there's a couple ways that can be dealt with. Um, uh, you know, down the road, what, what I think we'll see is a lot more uh, NFC and Bluetooth uh, low energy type transactions. So the guys at Airbits uh, with their wallet are, are on the right track. So I, I think that's going to make that whole checkout process a little quicker and easier and simpler uh, as time goes on. That, so we don't have that whole clunky checkout experience. But, but on a real low tech level, um, you know, a business owner can can really easily just uh, 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 you know make a picture, a QR code of their Bitcoin address, post it somewhere right on the register, and uh, maybe they have a, a tablet with uh, that's monitoring the blockchain just right next to the register, and you know, and they don't even have to exit the screen; they can just. Uh, uh, um, you know, quote the customer the price, tell them how much to pay. The customer scans that code that's, you know, a paper QR code taped to the outside of their register. And um, and then they can glance down at their tablet and they can see it the minute it hits the blockchain and know that the payment's received. Uh, they can ring it up as cash in their drawer so they don't have to exit their checkout process. And, uh, and then at the end of the night, they know any cash shortfall has got a balance with the Bitcoin balance that's on their, on their uh, uh, address. And, and it doesn't have to be hard and complicated, but I think a lot of people make it a whole lot harder than it has to be. So, um, But I would just treat it as a cash sale and then uh, uh, balance the books at the end of the day. The owner can reach into his pocket, pull out cash, put it into the cash drawer, and keep the Bitcoin for himself. And that's probably the best way to do it, I think. You know. Yeah. yeah. Great. Hey, Stephen, um, since you've talked with a lot of uh, business owners, <clears throat> What what are the main reasons for them not accepting Bitcoin? What what sure. barriers to entry? Let's say? Sure. So um, so yeah, the technical know-how, the fact of retraining employees, um, and the potential of exchange rate risk. That uh, a lot of them don't even know what Bitcoin is, so they don't even know there's exchange rate risk uh, to begin with. So. So I think that's kind of an invented marketing um, push that uh, uh, I think people like BitPay have been real successful in pushing, hey, we remove exchange rate risk. Um, and I think they kind of created a problem that really wasn't there to some degree. I, I, I guess, uh, in other words, what we should be doing as a community that if we really think Bitcoin's the superior currency is we should just be highlighting the long-term value of this currency and why it would be wise to accumulate as much as you can. And sure, the price is going to go up and down over time. Um, 
but but that's the fun of getting in early, you know, being one of the early adopters. And the, the, this whole risk, worry about exchange rate risk uh, is, is a false worry. Again, that's just a marketing pitch created by BitPay to promote their services because in reality, the average customer or average business out there is going to have less than 1% of their total sales be in Bitcoin. So their risk is, you know, is, is non-existent. I mean, if they have less than 1% of their sales in Bitcoin, and if that Bitcoin loses half of its value, they're not going to lose any money because that's just a small fraction of their total sales. So, so that is, uh, it, it's an unwarranted worry. Now, if you were a strictly a 100% business Bitcoin, a uh, Bitcoin business, then you would have to worry. But then that would mean the whole world is already using Bitcoin, and 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 what we'll see it when that day comes, the price will be a whole lot higher and a whole lot more stable because it'll be the dominant currency and it'll be the primary unit of account. And so, uh, so this whole uh, uh, marketing ploy to remove exchange rate risk is, I think, uh, totally unwarranted. And they're getting into Bitcoin for the wrong reasons. Um, um, you know, yeah. so so that's why I don't even actively go out and try and get people to take Bitcoin. I, I could care less because uh, economic law and the benefits of Bitcoin are, are not going to change. And so just through a natural organic process, the wealth of the world is going to slowly shift into things like Bitcoin. I think it will be Bitcoin. And... Um, and uh, the, the power of the market is going to get people interested in owning it because they're going to see people like you and I improving our lifestyle as our standard of living goes up because our purchasing power goes up over time. And the, the market's going to signal to them that, hey, why are you uh, prospering and I'm not? Well, it's because we own Bitcoin. And uh, so the market's going to... Uh, uh, on its own adopt Bitcoin over time. So, I mean, we can try and hurry it along, but but sometimes that slows it down instead of speeds it up because now you're trying to sell something. Um, but I don't think we need to sell Bitcoin. You just, uh, you can educate people and use it and just buy as much as you can. And, uh, um, and the price will take care of itself over time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Great. One of the one of the other huge selling points that comes to mind is the the fact that they don't have to pay these, you know, exorbitant credit card fees, uh, and that's kind of a no brainer for especially for online commerce where you don't have to train employees. You just kind of have to set it up. Uh, but yeah. So um, yeah. and so you're sort of a big Bitcoin maximalist. I'd call you. So you, yeah. <laughs> uh, some people think Bitcoin is going to uh, reach a certain level and have a, a specific purpose, but you you really believe it'll be the dominant world currency ultimately? I, I think so. I, I think it will be, I mean, because there's always one. There's always one dominant currency. And I wrote an article about this over at, um, at the digitalcurrencyinstitute.org, and it's called, uh, um, you know, Who Will Win the Currency Wars? And, and the point I make on there is that um, there's, there's going to be thousands of currencies out there, but there will always be one that's the most liquid that will basically be the backbone for the rest of the, the entire economy. You know, it'll be the universal currency, uh, or if you like the dollar, it'll be the new reserve currency, global reserve currency. So that's the one where people will come for final settlement. Um, and, uh, and it'll be the most liquid, the most demanded, and the most stable. And, and I think that's the role Bitcoin will play. Um, you may not use it in everyday transactions like the uh, clunkiness we see at the coffee shop or the fact that maybe transaction fees get too high. But uh, all those will be solved with other technologies, but Bitcoin will still be that main backing. And the reason is, is because it's, it's already decentralized and there's so much hashing power protecting that network that you, you basically can't stop it now. Um, there can be new, new coins created uh, that maybe are better in a lot of ways, but um, they don't have that, uh, that uh, uh, computing power, the hashing power, protecting the network. See, uh, early on when Bitcoin came out, um, 
if the powers that be re would have recognized what it was going to become, uh, they, they could have easily snuffed it out back then because there wasn't much, much hashing power um, and uh, they could have easily, uh, uh, you know, crushed it. But now it's out and now they're on high alert and so any other coin that comes out that tries to uh, gain a foothold will be real easy to snuff out because now, you know, uh, with Bitcoin, we had the benefit of the of the sneak attack. You know, we we were able to bring it in, gain a foothold, and now, you know, it's like a cancer; it can't be stopped. Um, but any new, uh, uh, you know, any new competing coin coming out now has to uh, it has no benefit of of that uh, sneak attack. You know, that Bitcoin had. So, um, so yeah, I think I think it's the one. You know, and you know, at least for my lifetime. So, <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. of course, Brian, I'm older. Brian, so. What do you think? Is Bitcoin the one? Um, <clears throat> I guess we'd have to go to, uh, you know, plug into the matrix and ask the Oracle. I'm not, I couldn't say for certain, but uh, I think, you know, I, when, I, when I first learned about Bitcoin in 2011, I was so excited about it. And, you know, the fact that so many people have sort of sprouted up, uh, I mean, people, uh, people have become interested in it since then makes it just that much more exciting. And so, you know, Litecoin seems to have, uh, for some reason, um, a big backing. Um, but Bitcoin, it's it's kind of like Coca-Cola. No one's ever going to be Coca-Cola, even if they invent a cola that tastes better than Coca-Cola. You know, it's, it's everyone wants Coca-Cola. So um, I, I think uh, I think that you could call Bitcoin the one, sure. <laughs> All right. All right, Roman, what do you think? Yeah, I think there's too much invested in Bitcoin for it to, you know, fail too easily. Um, a lot of people, especially the miners, they're not just going to watch Bitcoin fail and have some other coin take over. Um, I do think Bitcoin is going to be the one. But All right, so... There's going to be a lot of other things built around it because it's basically the first app um, on the blockchain, right? Yeah. So there you have it, folks. Totally unbiased consensus. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we uh, certainly, you know, are completely unbiased in this. We're just casual observers. <laughs> oh, and uh, be before pump, I forget... Pump. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. B before I forget, um, I do have. If any, if any listeners are curious, I do have uh, a prop, uh, real estate property in Los Angeles. It's available for purchase with Bitcoin. So if you if you type in um, Los Angeles Bitcoin Redfin on Google, the first search result will bring that up, and um, you know, feel free to uh, take a look at that. So uh, cool. yeah, I just wanted to get that plug out there while I remember. Yeah, I like that. I thought you were gonna say a uh, swamp land in Florida, but uh, you know, oh, Cal yeah. we're talking earthquake land in California, so <laughs> it's better. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sounds cool. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, maybe you can help them with that, Stephen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I I I uh, I did tweet um, the um, what's what's the billionaire uh, t Tim um, Draper. Draper. Yeah, I, I tweeted Tim Draper, you know, you know, hey, check out my property, buy my property for Bitcoin, but, uh, you know, didn't actually hear back from him, so maybe oh. he's still thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he's really trying to accumulate Bitcoin, so I doubt he'd want to sell his uh, his Silk Road Bitcoins at a loss. So. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Great. So, uh, Stephen, you're juggling so many startups. Um, wh where are you devoting your attention? You're definitely an ideas guy, right? Yeah, and that's that's to a fault because uh, I fall down in the execution side. So I have to uh, bring people around me that can uh, that can handle that part. And I'm finally getting to that point now. So, um, but. Uh, but yeah, so you know some of the other things we've created is a product called uh, CoinPro. So if you go to CoinPro.me, uh, it's just a it's two things in one. It's a uh, um, uh, 
some of you guys are familiar with bitaddress.org. Uh, bitaddress.org is just a, a Java um, uh, in-browser tool that allows you to create and manipulate and, and handle Bitcoin wallets. Um, and so you can print out your cold storage, your paper wallets, your encrypted wallets, uh, and uh, all the fancy stuff you can do with those. Um, CoinPro is just a, a, a private label version of that that you can get on a... Uh, um, uh, a CD that's uh, an Ubuntu uh, uh, operating system, so you can actually put that in your virus-infected uh, 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 Microsoft PC and boot up off of the disk, and it's read-only, and uh, it, and you can actually create secure cold storage in a secure environment, uh, and then uh, you shut down your computer, eject that CD, and now you can go back to your virus-laden uh, 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 PC and and have a, a a pretty darn secure Bitcoin wallet for cold storage, and that's I think that's probably how I created that paper wallet for you when we when we first talked, uh, Keith. So so that's that's just a cool tool. So that's that's the uh, the bit address clone on a on a clean operating system that's a read only CD ROM that you boot from. So that helps people. Uh, you know I think it's much better than a Trezor, uh, but that's just my opinion. Um, because you can do so much more with it. You can create brain wallets, you can create you know, BIP38 encrypted paper wallets, you can do split wallets, I mean there's all kinds of cool stuff. Um, but the second part is, which I think is probably where the value comes in, because I charge for mine where bit address is free, but uh, on the CoinPro I have a whole set of tutorials that shows people how to manipulate those coins in so many different ways. Um, you know, you go search online for uh, brain wallets, and you'll hear all the, uh, the the bad stories and the people discouraging you from using a brain wallet. But I show you how to use a brain wallet safely and securely, and I think it's the ultimate wallet. Uh, and how to build uh, some some protections in there in case you lose your memory or you uh, you know you die. There's lots of things you can do to carry your bitcoins in your brain and yet make them available to your survivors or your heirs if something happens to you. Um, so I have a whole tutorial section in there that kind of shows people how to do all those things, and it's um, it's really cool. So that's that's a probably the thing I'm most one of the things I'm most excited about uh, because it really handles the education side, which is a big thing for Bitcoin. Um, and uh, and then there's other projects that uh, that I'm working on. Uh, one that we're experimenting with right now that's kind of fun is. Uh, uh, if you go to bitcoinmerchant.com, we have a, a new free Bitcoin page, and uh, the, the idea behind that is called Bitcoin Scramble. So we have the domain name, of course, bitcoinscramble.com, and uh, it's games you can or puzzles you can solve, and the answer to those puzzles are actually a private key, and that private key gives you access to a Bitcoin wallet where we have money sitting. So each day I put a new game up on the site, uh, you can solve the puzzle, find the private key, and uh, go to bitaddress.org or use my CoinPro tool and uh, and uh, uh, access that wallet and empty those coins and send them to your wallet. So it's kind of a fun gamification of, of Bitcoin that helps educate. And uh, my challenge is, is, is there's people out there that are so smart that they snatch those coins within 20, you know, sometimes 10 minutes, I think was the record. I posted a puzzle up and someone solved it in 10 minutes and uh, got, got the Bitcoins. So, oh, wow. so my challenge is creating fun and interesting and yet challenging puzzles. And uh, the next iteration that, that, that we'll come out with is uh, some way to, uh, right now, because right now it's just a winner take all. So I post a game up there, it's one Bitcoin address with money sitting on there. And, um, and the first one to solve it gets all the Bitcoins. So the, the next uh, level is creating one where um, you can have multiple winners that can share in the pot. That way it's not just one guy winning all the time who uh, maybe has all the hashing power. You know, he has an unfair advantage with a, a, with a whole bunch of uh, uh, computers uh, descrambling these puzzles, you know, um, so, that, so that we can create it in such a way that, you know, advertisers pay for it. Um, and if you spend time on the site, that's traffic, which has value. And uh, and then if you uh, uh, you know play those games or those brain teasers, um, if you solve the puzzle, you can you can actually get Bitcoin and uh, 
and, and so we want to set it up to where everyone who actually spends time and solves a puzzle gets the bit, gets some Bitcoin versus just one person, you know, winning it. So we're working on that, and uh, but that's kind of fun. I mean, right now we have a, a puzzle up on the site that's been going for about 10 days now, and uh, each day I add 10,000 bits to the pot. So I think we're up to 130,000 bits. And um, we get on that. Yeah, so uh, go solve the puzzle. The, the, the clues are, uh, I give a new clue out every day, and uh, uh, if, if you're a Bitcoin geek like us, uh, you can probably figure it out as we get a little closer with a few more clues, and, uh, and yeah, cash it in, so have fun with it. Yeah, I think that's a great idea, because um, it get, if you've never had Bitcoin before, you... You don't you don't really want to play pay for it. You just want to see what it's like, experience it. Yeah. So that's yeah. a great way to do it. And uh, mining is kind of out of the question now. Right, it's right. Yeah. Uh, that's what that's the first thing everybody thinks they can just mine their mine bitcoins on their computer. <laughs> uh, well, I I was doing that back in 2011, back when you could still mine with uh, graphics cards. I was mining about it was coming out to about one bitcoin like every week and a half or two weeks and you know nice. they, were about, they were worth about ten dollars each back then and so I was like well this doesn't really seem cost of, of, effective or cost efficient I should probably just sell this computer so <laughs> <laughs> little did I know yeah I'm so glad that didn't happen to me yet because must be <laughs> must be days where you just kick in yourself <laughs> yeah I'm definitely trying to kick myself so now I'm just excited for the future <laughs> oh great so, yeah, it's yeah. funny. I'll, I'll just add to that. Um, most people come into Bitcoin at the rally, right, at the big peak, at the, or if you want to call it bubbles, you know. Uh, um, but uh, um, And that's how I came in. I heard about it with that article. It had ran up to about $7. And, um, and so I was calling around people on the forums trying to track people down and ask them, you know, hey, do you have any for sale? I want to buy some. Because I was I was part of that excitement, you know, and uh, I remember getting a hold of one guy out of uh, uh, New Mexico who ran a tea company, and uh, and I wasn't too far from there, so I was I called him up and I said, hey, do you have any I can buy from you? And he said, oh no, it's in a bubble. I sold all my con all my coins at five, you know, and. Uh, <laughs> um, and I was scratching my head, and for the next 30 days, I watched it go up to 30, and uh, and then I finally found someone to sell me some at 30, and like literally the very next day, it dropped to like five dollars again. You know, the big correct that first correction, or the first crash, the first time Bitcoin died, and uh, mm -hmm. but I but I hung on to it because I understood the long-term value, and I recognized that this was just a normal market correction. And I wish I would have been delayed just a few more days before I could buy, so I end up with ten times as much. But, uh, um, but, but that's how it's been all the way along. You know, every day I wake up and I look at that price, and uh, and, and and this is how I judge the value of Bitcoin. I look at it and I say, you know, this this is the ultimate offshore bank account um, because mm -hmm. you know why do people go offshore? They want privacy. They want uh, lower taxes. And they want uh, um, better control over their own money. Well, Bitcoin has all of those things, it, but it removes the the requirement of having to have a trusted third party. You know that counterparty risk out there. And and there's a humongous industry just built in offshore banking. There's I think um, thirty trillion dollars sitting in offshore banks because they want privacy protection and lower taxes. And uh, and when those guys figure out there's this thing called Bitcoin that's better than all of that, um, you know, you know, my little back of the napkin calculations is that I figured if just ten percent of those people go into Bitcoin, that's thirty million dollars. I'm sorry, no, three trillion dollars. You divide that by twenty-one million Bitcoins that'll ever be in existence, and and you come up with an average price of one hundred and forty thousand dollars per Bitcoin. So from day one, I looked at those numbers. So every morning I wake up, if it's under 140,000, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to get more. <laughs> and I don't care about the ups and downs in between because I know that's, I don't know, but you know, I, I can make that presumption that that's where we're going to end up over time because it is the, the superior currency out of all other currencies. And, uh, and so, but yeah, I mean, along, I, I bought some at... Uh, 120, and then it crashed down to 80, and then I bought some at 264. That very morning, I bought 
uh, uh, Bitcoin at, at the, the highest price, 264, and it dropped down to 60 that afternoon. Um, and uh, so I'm horrible at picking the market, but but I'm buying and holding long term, and I've actually ended up pretty well thus far, you know. So, but I bought at twelve thirteen hundred too when it was up there. So. <laughs> yeah. So I understand you're also a a, a holder of Zim, the Zimbabwe currency, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm really hoping that makes a comeback. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what, just what, in case. Yeah, so you carry uh, a bill in your wallet, right? Yeah, I'll pull it out right now. That's my little, uh, my future, uh, uh, you know, $100 billion there. And oh, okay. uh, what's uh, ironic is you can't really see it on the camera, but the date on this note was like 2006 or 2008, actually. So it was only as recent as 2008 that they destroyed their currency. Um, you know, Argentina does it every 10 years. And, you know, that's the dollar in our future. Um, that's where, you know, and, and you already look at it, the dollar's already lost, uh, uh, you know, over 97% of its purchasing power just in the last, I don't know, since we went off the gold standard. So, um, yeah, I think as more and more people discover the value of Bitcoin, they're going to want to have some. And, uh, but, uh, but yeah, so, so that's that. Yeah. Uh, oh. Well, I guess we're having a little technical difficulties, but... Uh, oh, there you are, Robert. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. So, uh, and you, so now you're doing something with color coins as well, right? Yeah, so this is kind of kind of interesting, and, and, and I have to be careful how I present that because uh, I am a, a ardent Bitcoin fan, and I don't want people to get the wrong idea that I'm trying to create something that's different from Bitcoin. So, no, cut, so to wanna, where, where, yeah. cut to the chase. Where can we buy Stephen Coin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so basically, um, so I, I have um, a background in economics, and I, I love the whole concept of barter and trading and, and wheeling and dealing. And so, some of you guys have probably seen that video going around the internet uh, called "One Red Paper Clip." I don't know if you've seen that one. But it's uh, where a guy starts with a, a paperclip, right? And uh, he does a series of barter trades, and uh, within about 16 trades, he ends up with a free and clear house. <laughs> and uh, no cash involved, no uh, fiat currency involved, just through a succession of trades. And um, so the, the, the thing that, that's really cool is that money, uh, you know, government-issued money and... Uh, that's just one form of money. That's one form of currency, but every asset or skill is a currency. So, like you guys have skills in 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 many areas. Those are currencies you can trade with. Um, physical goods like uh, you know my wallet or my shirt that I'm wearing uh, or junk in my garage is an asset that I can trade for something else. So it it, it becomes a currency, and. Uh, a lot of people have underutilized assets that they that they could monetize or or spend with if they just open themselves up to creative ways that they can start trading those assets. And so, uh, so I created a, a kind of a mix between a, a Craigslist and a barter exchange, and the website's called TradeCity.org. And uh, so, Trade City is is the idea that um, it's a community where people can go and trade the stuff they have for what they want. So if you, uh, you know, have an old motorcycle in your garage you don't use anymore because your wife is uh, doesn't like it, um, instead of selling it for cash, anytime you ask for cash or even Bitcoin because that's the the most superior cash out there, um, anytime you do that. Um, because that's the most demanded asset, it has the most purchasing power, which means you have to take the biggest discount if you want that hardest currency. And uh, But if you offer it in trade, it's amazing how much you can expand your purchasing power. So instead of selling that motorcycle at a discount for cash or Bitcoin, you can trade it at full retail value for something else that's, that, that, that someone doesn't want but you can use. And oftentimes they'll trade theirs at wholesale value, and you're trading yours at retail value. So now you create a margin in that trade, which allows you to do this trade-up strategy, like the paperclip guy did. And um, 
and so the whole art of, of trading and buying and selling and, and using things other than just money uh, creates some really cool opportunities and, and, it, and it helps you expand your purchasing power. So, so I created this website, TradeCity.org, to help people list and trade different things. Um, but still, direct trade is inefficient, and if, uh, if we can facilitate and lubricate that process uh, in some ways, um, we can. So I created a currency for that site called uh, um, uh, Trade City Dollars. So the, uh, the symbol is XTC. And uh, so Trade City Dollars is basically a colored coin uh, created through the Coin Prism wallet. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Coin Prism, but it's a, a wallet that actually uses the Bitcoin blockchain. And then you can color that coin to represent whatever you want. And, uh, and so Trade City dollars are just a one-to-one -one with the dollar. Uh, they're not meant to be an investment or an asset to accumulate for long-term value. They're just meant to be a trading tool on that website or in that community uh, so that if you put up something for sale or trade, someone can offer you uh, Trade City dollars, which is basically a barter dollar, and, uh, and you can then take that and spend it elsewhere on the website with somebody else. So we're creating our own little mini community, our little mini, uh, uh, mini city. That's why I use the term city. This is a, this is a, a, a community that has uh, supply and demand, uh, um, different products, supply and demand imbalances, which means there are opportunities. So you have arbitrage opportunities. And in, in a good uh, analogy is like... Uh, 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 just like any other city or any other country, when you travel to another country, they have things that uh, that uh, um, that you want, but they have a lot of things you don't want that maybe you're used to back home. So there is a demand that you have that's not being filled by the current supply in that community. So this is where arbitrage can come in. And so what you can do is go into these different communities, and uh, Trade City is a community, Bitcoin World is a community, but you can go into that community and see what they are lacking in goods and services, and uh, and as long as they have something there that you want, you can go offer those uh, goods and services in exchange for what they have, and and you can profit. So um, I know that's a long-winded explanation, but so what but, what keeps the trade city dollars? What keeps them pegged to the dollar? Okay, so so it's just uh, uh, it's just the policy of the currency. So in other words, um, if it, um, in the definition, basically, when we created the currency, uh, um, it's uh, exchangeable dollar for dollar. Now it's voluntary, so someone may not accept it dollar for dollar and trade for their goods or services, um, and so uh, in essence. Um, for that community, since I created the currency, I'm kind of like the central banker for that area. Um, so if I want the purchasing power to remain strong, I can't go spend it into oblivion into that community and deflate the value of that currency. So, um, so what backs, quote, my currency is my inventory on the site because uh, if I spend that currency, uh, that can come back and buy the assets that I have on that site that you can trade with. So, um, so all it is is just a, a fun tool to help bring the crypto world into the barter community and, and give you one more um, useful tool uh, for that community. So. Great. So it's kind of like a point system or like trade gift card all combined into one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. Sounds interesting. Yeah. Actually, the chain gang, uh, we're, we're planning on releasing the first very first decentralized podcast token. Uh, competitor cool. to LTB coin. Uh, it'll also be using the counterparty uh, counterparty platform, but it's unique in that it will be uh, it will be controlled. The distribution will be controlled by the um, by the people that hold it. Uh, so this is a pretty innovative new thing, and uh, so keep an eye out for more details. Cool. On it. Awesome! Uh, Looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we we'll, we might get you some. To, uh, for being Love on the it. show, and just anybody who provides some kind of value to the show, we will, uh, will, will offer them, uh, offer them some chain game tokens. I don't know what to call them yet. So All if right. you have any ideas, <laughs> call them links. So, 
So yeah, keep an eye out for that. Um, well, Stephen, we're coming to the end of the show. I just want to thank you for coming on. Uh, um, and if you know, if there's anything you want to add, or if you guys have anything to ask him, where he goes. Anybody? Don't speak at once, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, final thoughts, anybody? Um, well, let's see here. Covered so much. Where are we going with the uh, Digital Currency Institute? Oh, yeah, right. good question. Okay, so Digital Currency Institute, um, that's a project that I'm actually looking for people who want to help develop that, and so right now it's one of those uh, uh, startup ideas, and, and in its present form, basically, uh, you pass a test, demonstrate that you have a, a solid understanding of how Bitcoin works, and then you get a certification from the institute. And uh, and and right now, that's where we've stopped. That's where we're at. But uh, in the future, there's things we can do, like uh, offer advanced courses and certain specializations uh, of the Bitcoin world. Um, we can also do uh, conferences, things like that. So. Um, you know, if if you know of anybody who wants to help develop out that project, we're looking for someone to help do that. I it, because I have so many projects right now, it's just simply a uh, a test you can pass, get certified, and then display to the world that that you know a little bit about what you're talking about. So. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, if you're looking for anybody else, uh, you know, uh, is there any other people that you want to uh, that you're looking for for your many projects? Um, this is the the place to announce them. We have a vast audience cool. that spans the globe. So. Cool, well, I'm, yeah, I'm, definitely I'm, reach out to me. Uh, yeah, and speaking of which, I'm looking for someone uh, to hire someone on uh, full-time. We'll start out part-time and then full-time to mm -hmm. um, to um, transcribe uh, hash codes manually to solve for uh, – the Bitcoin, Bitcoin um, <laughs> I just can't afford to, to get new, you know, mining equipment right now, so I just want someone to do a pen and paper style, so, uh, yeah, if anyone's listening to this, uh, any, you know, preferably some mathematicians or you know, any kind of experience. Yeah, Old school, yeah, I love it. <laughs> preferably, yeah, preferably PhD or master's degree in, in mathematics, that would be, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, great. Uh, thanks again for coming on. Uh, you're our third guest, uh, or actually our second guest, sorry, our, uh, awesome. our third episode. Uh, and so I encourage everybody uh, out there to check out um, Bitcoin Merchant, check out Bitcoin Perks, uh, check out the puzzles. Uh, how do how do we access those puzzles again? I want to get I want to get yeah, on that. go to uh, BitcoinScramble.com or Bitcoin Merchant will take you there too. But uh, but yeah, they're fun and uh, and give me some ideas. I'm looking for feedback, so um, uh, yeah. shoot me some info on that. We'll make some fun games out of that. So. All right, great. Yeah, uh, yeah, check it out, everybody. Thanks so much, Stephen, for coming on. All right, you bet. Thanks, thanks for having me. Signing off. <laughs>